presence, Lord. Let no one go the same way, Lord. Lord, tonight we ask for an encounter, Lord, for our visitation, Lord, for our transformation, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, we worship you. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. He said, Thy words were found, and I did it there. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Lift up your voice and make the man of God's word to you tonight. Say, Father, tonight I make the man of your word. Let my word come, O God, with power, with authority. In the name of Jesus, the word for my lifting, for my transformation. In the name of Jesus, the word for my turnaround. Lord, let that word come tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, send forth my word tonight. Put my word in the mouth of your servant tonight, O God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, let my word come. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The Bible speaking, he said, I found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. I'd like you to leave God's servant before God tonight. I say, Father, we ask for fresh oil upon your servant tonight. Lord, lay your hands upon him. Let your hand be heavy upon his life. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Father, tonight we made the man of your war. We made the man of your oil upon your servant tonight. Lay your hands upon him, O Lord. Let your hand, O God, rest on him. Let your hand be heavy upon your servant tonight. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. Blessed be thy name forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I'd like you to put your hands together for Jesus for answer prayer. Hallelujah. I also know you came in here with our testimony. Our minister is waiting for you right at the glory gate entrance. I'd like you to go share your testimony and in due course, you'll be called to testify in the larger house. Once again, put your hands together as we receive the priest team. Somebody just lift those hands and keep God praise that he deserves this evening. Him alone is worthy of our praise. Just love the Lord. He's been so good. He's been so gracious to us. By his mercies, we are not consumed. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. Somebody lift those hands and give God praise. Him alone is worthy. We love you, Jesus.
together for Jesus and you may be seated. Quickly it is testimony time. Would you put those hands together once more as we welcome our sister Jane Idoko God's light and um, sister Jennifer Kizito. Again Jennifer Kizito and Jane Idoko God's light. Put those hands together for Jesus. You're trusting God that you are next in line for a testimony. Yes, I'll give a background to the testimony of our sister, Jane Idoko Godslight. She said, um, sometime last year, she won a contract and began executing a part of the contract, which was suspended and hopefully to be terminated afterwards. But she, she said after she completed the first aspect of the contract, um, Mysteriously, it was taken from her and given to another person. So it became a source of concern to her. It became a source of concern to her. And then, um, but in the course, a, a couple of weeks ago, the senior pastor graciously did for every single worker 
in this house. Every department represented in this house were paid for on the altar here. And he took authority over a lot of things and asked that the grace of God that walked and flowed from this altar will answer for every worker. Our sister is a member of the choir and also of the evangelism department. She said after those ministrations on this altar, the palm sec of the said ministry came under pressure and gave a directive that whoever that contract was given to, it should be retrieved and given to our sister. And that was done, and she has executed the contract, and she's here to give God praise. Would you put those hands together, please, for Jesus? Praise the Lord. This is our sister, Jennifer Kizito. Um, she said sometime for about six months, she, there was this mysterious headache that she felt while she was in school. She felt very uneasy. She had to manage through and then came to Abuja when she met with God's servant and he prayed for her. Can you face the camera? Thank you. Now, they went to the hospital for an, they, they did an MRI on her, on the, on the brain, and then realized there was a tumor in the brain. That tumor had grown to some significant size that was putting pressure on everything, affecting both her sight. And God's servant prayed for her. She said afterwards, she came here for um, a communion service on the 16th of September after the prayer was administered. And decided to go back to run another test. Afterwards, the headache, everything was gone. They did another MRI and realized that there was no more tumor in the brain. The fire of God's presence had dissolved that tumor. She said they only realized that she had a growth in the nose, or in her nostril rather, a nasal polyp, which was operated upon. And this is her recovery state and she's not taking it for granted, has come to say, thank you, Jesus, for your hand that you rested upon me. Please put those hands together for Jesus, for miraculous and wondrous things he does on this mountain. We do not take for granted. Let's give Jesus a big clap and a shout of praise. Your healing is permanent in Jesus' name. What a mighty God we serve. Tumor in the brain dissolved, dematerialized at a communion service. God is about to settle some issue in your life in this communion service today in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me give Jesus another clap and a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for these amazing testimonies and we return all the glory and the praise to you in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome you this time and I believe that God is set for your lifting. A sense of, very, uh, of, of destiny very quickly this evening is titled The Grasshopper Mentality. The senior pastor has written quite um, eloquently on the issue of the grasshopper mentality from Numbers chapter 13 verse 33 where Mike Moodle got the phrase the grasshopper mentality. Um, it's when one sees himself with a mentality such that um, he's not as good as other people and cannot make it in life like other people and um, other people can succeed but he cannot succeed. God does not love him, etc., etc. Those are the complexes that makes up the grasshopper mentality. There in Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, where it says, And there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sights as grasshoppers. So were we in their sights. Can you see how the children of Israel saw themselves? They saw themselves as grasshoppers and they began to look like grasshoppers in the sight of the enemy. How you see yourself, how you think of yourself determines what others think about you. When people talk, they simply manifest the mentality that they have about themselves. He gave an illustration here that, for instance, someone comes up and says, ah, I saw your name in the recent CBN recruitment uh, for new staff. And the person will say, ah, me? And, and maybe the person says, is your name not, there's a name senior pastor put here. 
John Michael. Is your name not John Michael? And the person say, it might be another John Michael, not my own. Who dashed monkey banana? Have you ever encountered such scenarios before where people believe that there are some things that are too good to be for them? There are some positions too much for them. There are things that they cannot attain. Beloved brothers and sisters, we have been encouraged today to determine to resist that inferiority mindset, to refuse that mindset, that complex, that belittles yourself and puts yourself down. And I believe that today, God is rising up on the behalf of somebody in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What's our assignment? Number one, refuse to belittle yourself and belittle God's purpose for your life. Number two, reject every grasshopper mentality. And number three, see yourself the way God sees you. Somebody say, I hear. Tell your neighbor, I will see myself the way God sees me in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and let's pray together. Say, oh Lord, I reject every grasshopper mentality. I receive the grace to renew my mind and see myself as you see me. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll be proceeding right away. We'll be receiving the ministry of Dunamis Voice. And they are singing one of those very many songs that have been received and written by God's servant, the senior pastor. Powerful song um, titled, Where Can I Go? Where Can I Go? From Your Presence. Received and written by God's servant. Dr. Pastor Paul and Enche. Let's receive Dunami's voice as the minister of the song. Take the wind. 
Welcome to this last midweek service of the month of October, the very last midweek service of the month of October. We are like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Somebody get ready for the turnaround of your captivity. The turnaround of your family's captivity. Turnaround of our nation's captivity. In the name of Jesus. We are at a critical point in history as individuals, as families, as a church, and as a nation. And I believe we are at the junction of a turnaround. If you believe that, you will stand and give the Lord a turnaround shout of hallelujah. A turnaround shout of hallelujah. A turnaround is happening without any doubt. Without any doubt. Shout the loudest. Amen. 
Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. We are at the junction where the prophets prophesy. The great things about our nation that we heard about and the situation on the ground didn't let it look like it will ever happen. We are at that junction now. Even though it doesn't look it yet, but something is about to break. And very, very, very soon, many people will hold the skirt of him that is a Nigerian and say, we want to follow you and know your God. That God is an incredible God. He's a prayer answering God. He's a God that can, do, that can do signs and wonders. He's the God who changes times and seasons. He's the God who works drastic and dramatic and dimensional. He's the God who changes things overnight. Shout the loudest. Amen. They have known before now that we are a religious people, a God. We have not been wasting our time. They will know that we have not been carrying this Bible for nothing. They will know that there is a God in heaven who is interested in the affairs of men. Shout the loudest amen as you take your seat. Hallelujah. The subject tonight is your joy and your harvest the connection between your joy and your harvest that's our objective understanding the connection between your joy and your harvest there are spiritual principles and practices products and packages that is, you are doing something in the spiritual realm, following a spiritual principle, observing a spiritual practice, and it's suddenly translated into a physical product and a physical package. For example, you are only at your seed carries the power of defense. That it can be a shield. You never knew that. It was a spiritual thing you were doing. And it translated into something physical. In the same manner. It has been confirmed. That joy. Obeying the scripture. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. And operating the principle. And the practice of joy. Makes things happen. In the physical. And one of those things. Is physical harvest and physical increase. Yes. It is confirmed that there is a direct proportionality between your joy and your harvest. That the joy, the intensity of the quantity of harvest that can be experienced by that person. That is not Newton's law of universal gravitation or Newton's law of motion. This is scriptural law. Connectivity between joy and harvest. Now, I'll give you three scriptures and then we'll go into how it does it. Number one, we just read the scripture. Psalm 1, 2, 6, verse 5. It said, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Whatever be the condition of your life to reap, there must be joy. Joy is critical to harvest in life. It doesn't matter what, how you sowed. If you must reap, you reap with joy. That is scripture. Scripture number 2, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 3b. He said, The joy before thee according to the joy in harvest. 
the joy before thee according to the joy in harvest. What does that mean to you? If it is your season of joy, then it is your season of harvest. The joy before you according to the joy of harvest. There is one way to know that harvest is around the corner. Joy. There is one way to know that dry season cannot continue. Joy. In Acts of the Apostles, the, 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 the Bible says the people, the people, they, they, they looked at the people and the, and the way the people were rejoicing, they thought they drank new wine. Acts chapter 2 verse 11. They thought they had drank new wine. These people are full of new wine. What kind of joy is this? That Holy Ghost joy translated into explosive Escalative, intensive, monumental, colossal, gigantic, gagatuan harvest. In Acts chapter two and in, in Acts chapter two and in verse forty-seven, and the Lord added to the church daily, and the Lord and and and, and you see joy there again. They were praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Whether the harvest is going to be spiritual, or the harvest is going to be physical, or the harvest is going to be material, if it is your season of joy, then it is your season of harvest. There is one way to know that the enemy is about to attack your harvest. He attacks your joy. <laughs> there is one way to know that the enemy is after your harvest when you notice that he is after your joy. That was why we said earlier on, like the men of old used to say, if the devil cannot steal your joy, he cannot keep your goods. Hallelujah. Say it like this. Harvest is not in view until joy is in place. Harvest is not in view until joy is in place. Harvest is not in view until joy is in place. Fourth scripture, Joel chapter 1. And in verse 10 to verse 12, that one is more rugged and more direct. He said, the field is wasted. The land mourned, For the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languishes. Be ashamed, O ye husbandmen, how? O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. What is happening here? The vine is dried up. The fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree. The palm tree also. The apple tree. Even all the trees of the field are withered. Why? Because joy is withered. Away from the sons of men. We read it all the time. But harvest dries up. Where joy has dried up. That is, the harvest was ready, but because joy dried up, the harvest dried. The seed already produced harvest, but because joy dried up, the harvest dried up. There are people who say, I've been, I've been doing all my spiritual exercises, I'm not seeing the result. I've been trusting God to, to, to get souls saved, I'm not seeing any result. I've been, I've been doing my covenant practice and doing all the things I need to do and yet there is no supernatural supply. For as long as joy dries up, even if harvest was ready, it will dry up. I believe that to, after tonight, somebody will be deliberate with their joy. Deliberate with your joy. Deliberate with it. Listen. The harvest 
Happiness cannot be sustained until joy is maintained. That is what this passage told us. That the harvest cannot be sustained until joy is maintained. The harvest cannot be sustained until joy, until joy is maintained. And you have to be deliberate about this. <laughs> because if you are waiting for everything around you and everything you hear and see and, and everything to make you happy, you are in for, you are in for, a, for a, a shock of your life. I was playing with a little child yesterday. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? And after I finished talking, he said, pray for me. I said, what? He said, my father was shot two weeks ago. How does his father? The her father shot to death. What? You, my friend? Immediately, my countenance fell. Herself and her mother will be traveling to the village tomorrow. What? What happened? Some people looked for him and shot him. What? I had to move from there. Organize myself again. Now, when you, when you pastor by his grace at this kind of little level, you hear all manner of those kind of things. And you must put the devil where he belongs by ensuring that your joy is intact. One of the young men following me who saw what was happening, that one, tears almost started falling from his eyes. That is the world of bad news and the world of bad things we live in. So, you come to the point where you have to be deliberate with your joy. Am I communicating at all? The harvest cannot be sustained until joy is maintained. Now, let's go. Why is joy so relevant to the harvest? Number one, joy which ultimately translates into praise is a, is a fertilizer of seed and resources for the harvest. Whatever you know the fertilizer to do with seed, with crop, that is what joy does with seed, with your output. In John chapter 6 verse 11, they had only five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus gave thanks. He literally fertilized it with appreciation. He literally fertilized it with joy. Fertilized it with thanksgiving. And it exploded. Five loaves, two fishes. Fed 5,000 men apart from women and children and there was 12 baskets left over by the fertilization capability of joy. It doesn't matter what you have. If you have joy, you have thanksgiving, you have praise, what you have is more than enough. Let me say it like this. It doesn't matter where you are now. If you have joy, if you have praise, if you have thanks, where you are now is too much for a starting point. Where you are now is too much. It's more than enough for, for a starting point. It's too good a starting point. Too good. If you know what to do, what you have will be more than enough. And what to do is joy, is praise, is appreciation. Joy, which ultimately translates into praise, 
is a fertilizer of seed and resources for the harvest. Number two, joy again. Joy which ultimately translates into praise. Puts the earth under pressure. It puts the earth, it puts the earth and its systems under pressure to yield their increase and harvest. It puts the earth and its systems under pressure to yield their increase and harvest. In Psalm 67, and in verse 5, Psalm 67, and in verse 5, said, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth be put under pressure to surrender her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. The earth shall yield. Yield is like forcing it. It's like forcing his hands to open. Your joy, which becomes your praise and becomes your thanksgiving, put systems under pressure to release what is yours, to release what is due to you, to release your due harvest and due rewards. Someone say amen. As we speak tonight, anywhere, whatever is yours is, they are already under pressure. In the name of Jesus. Thirdly, your joy creates the conducive climate for harvest it creates the conducive climate around your life for harvests and increase that's right apart from the fertilizer on the ground it is possible for you to fertilize an earth where the climate was wrong it fertilizes It makes the air around you conducive for good things to manifest. Did you hear what I just said? Your joy makes the climate around you conducive for good things to manifest. And I'll show that to you in scripture. How many of you know that people carry climates? When you come around a tensed person, you feel it. When you come at, 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 around a bitter person, even before they start talking, you can feel something. When you come around a proud and arrogant person, you feel it. When you come around a humble person, you feel it. When you come an ex, around an excited, exciting, excitable person, you feel it. When you come across a dominant, dominating personality, you feel it. In the same manner, the joy, you come ac ac around the climate of the joyful. It makes the atmosphere conducive for good things to manifest. I'd like you to try it. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 15. It said, all the days of the afflicted, all the sorrowful, all his days are evil. All the days of the sorrowful are evil. He said, but he that is of a merry heart, he has a continuous feast. Hello? That, 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 the, the afflicted guy is the depressed guy, the, the bitter guy. Bad things happen for people who refuse to feel happy. He's moving on, on the road, all of a sudden, his leg hit, 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 hit nail. And then he's very angry. What kind of nail is this? His head jam electric pole. Uh, and he just continues in, in that kind of anger. And car is honing for him. He's not aware. And then it's raining season. And then the, the car splashed mud on him. 
You see, it doesn't mean all the devils in this world are against me today. No, you are the number one devil. Sorry to say that. Take your sin. I have come across, and this is practical, I have come across people who have refused to be happy and unhappy things happen for them. Look, look at the, 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 the Living Bible version of that passage. Please, you will line up like three passages, versions for me. When a man is gloomy, who, what is gloomy? Like a big bulldog who, who that is poisoned. When a man is gloomy, everything seems to go wrong. Everything. That climate attracts the wrongness of things. When he is cheerful, everything seems right. Somebody is meeting him for the first time and giving him a job. Oh, I like you, man. You're just full of smiles and I like your tie and I like your, the brooch on your other house. So what's your name? What do you do? Everything is just working. How many of you know that sadness can uglify your face? And they say that the best makeup is a smile. If you like rub red and green and yellow. They call it mascara. And it, it sounds to me like masquerade. <laughs> You're right. Uh, until you look practically like masquerade. If you are not happy, it won't happen. You understand what I'm talking about? Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. See, when a man is gloomy, everything seems to go wrong. When he decides to be happy, all of a sudden, everything seems to be happening. Look at the New Living Translation. For the despondent, despondent, mm, everybody hates me. He said, every day brings trouble. Every day. Every day brings trouble. For the happy heart, life is a continuous feast. His every day is birthday. Every day is Christmas. Every day is celebration. <laughs> for, 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 for most times, me, I don't have Sunday dress or Christmas dress. Every day, every day. Look at it again. For the despondent. If that was the only passage we, 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 we came to church for today, it's enough. Every day brings trouble. For the happy heart, life is a continuous. Now give me the Bible. Okay, message. A miserable heart means a miserable life. The mistress, miserable life. But a cheerful heart fills the day with song. That is, you will have something to sing about before the day is over. I prophesy to somebody, you will have something to sing about before the day is over. You will have something to sing about before the day is over. If you believe that, say the loudest, amen. amen. Don't ever let anybody tell you, why are you always smiling? There are people who carry sorrow looking for where to distribute it. <laughs> I'm telling you. They are angry that you are exuberant and excited and excitable and exciting. And because the, your, the way you carry yourself condemns their despondency and their depressive life. And, and they feel agitated, aggravated, irritated, frustrated. If you can't help them, don't let them hurt you. I just said something. If you cannot help them, don't allow them to hurt you. If you cannot give them joy, don't permit them to take your joy. What happens? Junction. They face their joylessness. You move with your joyfulness. <laughs> Is it not a junction that road divides? Praise the Lord. This is very, very, please take your seat. Very, very important. They get, they, there are those who are sadists, sadomanists. 
they just look at you and they and they are just they are just angry that you are happy. They feel sad. Just try your best. They are not exciting. They are not excited. They are not excitable. Don't waste your life with them. Is there somebody here who believes that joy, you are going to move with joy deliberately from today. You will jump with a shout of victory. A shout of victory. A shout of victory. A shout of victory. A louder shout of victory. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Take your seat. I saturate my life with sound. Joyful sound. Is that I'm making it myself? Or somebody's making it for me? I mean, I'm just, just very, very deliberate. Very deliberate. Because the, this world is wired to depress people. <laughs> wired. If the thing you, you saw in the daytime didn't depress you, he wanted to show you a dream in the night that should depress you. Tell the devil, take your dream and you and your dream go to hell. Or somebody will dream on your behalf. And say, <laughs> and say the dream I saw about you last night is not a good one at all. Pray for three days and three nights and fast. It's okay. Have you prayed for me about the dream? Yes. All right. Pray and cancel it. I can dream too. <laughs> if it matter is so serious, let God show me. What did I do, God, that He won't show me something that is wrong about me and then He will bypass me to show you? And I'm not saying you should despise what people say. But don't allow any devil, not the person now, but whatever devil is being used to cause you depression. What, what does joy do to your harvest? It changes your climate and make it favorable for good things to happen around your life. Number four, your joy, which all ultimately translates into praise, is a sequel of harvest. S I C K L E. You know a sickle that they used to harvest rice. It say you reap with joy. You reap with joy. You reap with joy. You, you, if you want to go and reap, carry joy and reap with it. Psalm 1, 2, 5, verse 6. And he said, anytime the harvest is near, Joel chapter 3 and in verse 13. Joel chapter 3 verse 13. He said, Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down. The harvest is ripe. When the harvest is ripe, put out the instrument. And what is the sickle for the harvest? It is your joy. It is your praise. It is your thanksgiving. The harvest has been waiting for you to put out the instrument. The harvest has been waiting for you to put out. I, 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 I feel God giving somebody direction that for the next seven nights, you will do some 15, 20, 30 minutes of praise in the middle of the night. And just say, Lord, I am just appreciating you and just excited because of my harvest that is ready. And I am putting forth the sickle now. I am putting forth the instrument to bring home the harvest. And I tell you, in the name that is above every name, I see that harvest coming for your life. So, the joy fertilizes your resources. And the joy brings the air to under pressure and the joy creates the atmosphere around your life for harvest and increase and the joy is your sickle harvest implement harvest instrument what is my counsel tonight number one keep your joy flowing by choice not by happenings, not by events. Keep your joy flowing by choice. He said rejoice in the Lord. 
Again I say unto you, rejoice. Keep your joy flowing by choice. Now, let me make this statement and please don't forget it for life. Here is it. Don't wait for things to happen to be joyful. Don't wait for things to happen to be joyful. Be joyful to make things happen. You didn't get that. Don't wait for things to ha happen. Then you became happy. You waited too long. Be joyful to make things happen. That is, your joy happens things. Don't wait for things to happen to be joyful. Be joyful to make things happen. I am sure you know that joy before seeing answers is one of the highest signs of faith. Abraham, the Bible said, was strong in faith. In Romans chapter 4 and in verse 20. Giving praise to God. That is strong faith. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. And how did he manifest that strength of faith? Giving glory to God when there was no sun yet. That is having joy to make things happen. Not things happening, then you are happy. Friends, it works. It has been proved. We have proved it over and over. And it works. Keep your joy flowing by choice. Don't wait for things to happen. To be joyful. Be joyful to make things happen. Number two. Let the spiritual be the most authentic source of your joy not the physical. Let the spiritual be the most authentic source of your joy, not the physical. The spiritual. The fact that you are, you are saved. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Woo! Just, see, when you place your joy on physical things, when the devil shake those physical things, he can shake your joy. That is, your joy is in your job. I am working in NNPC. <laughs> and they are paying us so and so and so and so amount. Uh, that's, 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 that's joy in the wrong place. I'm working in Central Bank of Nigeria. That is joy in the wrong place. I am working with the governor of so and so and the senator. So that's when the senator's job expires, your, 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 your joy expires. Your car. You see some people almost die on the road because somebody hit their car from the back. Oh! What? Why? You almost died. From the day we started driving moto till the time we, we started driving cars. <laughs> you know moto? <laughs> moto is the one that you, you need effort to manage. <laughs> moto attracts a lot of mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> Take your seat. I have never had the time to stop on the road. And I will never. That is, that uh, somebody hit your car and you are there for the next one hour talking. Even if I am the fourth, let me, you are at fault, I, let me pay you. So I can be on my way. There is so much to do with life. There are people, all this, I know him, I knew a man, he will almost kill his child 
for touching the... He, he washes the car by himself. Yes, he has children that can wash car. He, he cleans car by himself. He himself will wash the car. You can't, you can't move near the car. Even if, no matter how drowsy the dog is, you can't mistakenly sleep on lion's bed. That's how the matter of that car is. Yes, yeah, that's what I say. And, and you tie your joy to these earthly things. It shakes you. There are those when one uh, government comes to power or another government lets power, with their government is in power or their government is out of power, it, it, it damages their joy and damages their life permanently. Their whole existence. Oh, our people are not in power anymore. But when you are tied to God, though the fig tree fails to blossom, and there is no fruit in the vine, he said, I will rejoice in the Lord. Not I will rejoice in my house. Not I will rejoice in my car. Not I will rejoice in my salary. I will rejoice in the Lord. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say unto you, rejoice. He didn't say rejoice in your husband. Thank God for good husbands. Rejoice in your wife. Thank God for good wives. Rejoice in your uncle. Thank God for good uncles. But don't tie your joy to all those things. Rejoice in the Lord and let God you are rejoicing in make those other things to give you joy. Am I communicating? Stand up on your feet. Rejoice in the Lord your God. And when you rejoice in the Lord, he will make your husband give you joy. He will make your wife give you joy. He will make your job give you joy. But when you place your joy on these other things, you are on your own with those things. And God will be watching both you and what you have placed your joy in. He didn't even say rejoice in your congregation. Some people say they have seen me preach to 10 people. As if I was preaching to one million people. That's, I'm, that's how my life is. I mean, in the lockdown, I wasn't seeing anybody. And yet, the fire of the preaching did not drop. I preached in, a, in, in our location in Nindugu many years ago. And, and, and they were, the, the place we used was a tiny room. And I preached, I sweated like. So, wondering, ah. so this thing can happen everywhere. I thought it's only when church is full. One of our members said, who followed us from when we, we used the little ballroom in Sheraton? He said he saw me preach in that small Sheraton ballroom carrying 74 people. Fully chilled AC. The place is chilled with AC. Sweat from under shirt to shirt to first piece of suit to second piece everywhere sweat in an AC ballroom of a five-star hotel it, to 74 people at times 50 people. Lucky program the same. I mean, everywhere. You don't place your joy on things. Place your joy on the God who is a constant. And he will make the things to happen. Now, I, when I pray to those 74 people or 50 people, I, as if I was preaching to 100,000 people, or 120,000 people. When the time came for those quality, quantity of people to arrive, they arrived effortlessly. And the preaching did not decrease or drop. Fire is the same. You will make it. I said you will make it. If you don't say amen, it will return back to sender. And the blessing is returning back to sender. If you don't receive it, it's back to sender. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say louder, amen. amen. How many of you are going to consciously work on your joy? I know that currently there may be things in your life that don't want you to smile. There may be situations around you and the devil is saying others are going to church, they have results. What is your own results? Tell that devil you will be part of my, you will witness my testimony. You will witness my breakthrough. You will witness my turnaround. You are a believer. Shout the loudest. Amen. Can you take that song on that ancient bit. The 
joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my other. Do it like you are marching. The Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Everybody sing the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Everybody sing the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He gave me living water and I thirst no more. He gave me living water and I thirst no more. He gave me living water and I thirst no more. And the bride has said, Hallelujah, Hallelujah for the Lord. In the high, everybody single. Hosanna. Hosanna. 